everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Merry Christmas to all of you. Happy holidays uh, or whatever you're celebrating. We are officially in that week, you know, before Chris or between Christmas and New Year's where absolutely nothing means anything because you're trying to figure out what day it is. You're trying to figure out what time it is. You're living in your stretchy pants. Yeah, welcome to that week. And I definitely know this disorientation that I feel every year on this week feels like it's bigger um, this week because, of course, 2020, you feel like you're in a twilight zone, but now you're in this normal twilight zone abyss and you feel like you're absolutely deeper in the twilight zone than you've ever been. I might be the only one, but definitely this week feels like that. So I do want to wish you happy holidays. I hope you had a great holiday. We did a very different holiday, of course. Um, spent a lot of time with family, a lot of a lot of fun that we had, but definitely very, very different. I bought my kids a hoverboard and probably the worst thing I've ever bought. It's giving me heart palpitations daily as I watch them spin. And I actually tried to ride it and fell off twice and almost broke my arm twice. So do not recommend those, but they love them. All right, we're going to get started. Um, my name is Jacelyn Hempel. I help school administrators engage their teachers. I'm passionate about teachers and I do this through systems and frameworks that build trust and relationship and also build independent leaders within your school community. So I am definitely passionate about that. And I'm also passionate about the students, of course, and we have our own student wellness podcast as well called Even If You Miss. So check that out. I have a blog as well, even if you miss dot blog. Now today's topic, I'm going to talk about mistakes. I'm going to talk about the three things that I have, the biggest mistakes that I have done while trying to engage my teaching community. These big, huge mistakes that um, went with good intentions of growing a lucrative community. And I'm going to talk today about what I did about them. So I'm going to tell you what I didn't do right, but I'm also going to tell you what I did because of that and it made me a better leader. So I'm going to always give you actions. And so if you've been struggling for a while to grow and engage your community, and if you've been sitting in a funk for a while now, I'm certain a few of these mistakes might sound familiar and they might surprise you on how I turn them around, but I'm going to show you so that I can help get you moving in the right direction to grow your community quickly, that engagement. So I've got some great insights on what not to do because I've done them over and over again. And then I'm going to show you how I figured out how to take them and, and make it into a system so I wasn't wasting time anymore. So my productivity, my efficiency, efficiency have all increased. So I'm going to give you these tips and tricks, but I also today want to share an invitation with you. I have a free live masterclass happening one week from today, and it's going to be about three secrets that I'm going to give you that engage your teaching community. So I'm going to post the link. Actually, I posted the link in my comments, but I'm going to post it right now too. Um, so if you're interested, you can go check that out and it, it explains a lot more about what I'm going to be talking about today as well. And of course, today we are humans. I'm going to shut that off so we don't keep hearing dings. We are humans. We make mistakes. We fall. We get back up. And of course, the getting back up, that is the most important. Do we get back up and try it again? Just pivot? Or do we quit that completely and start something new? Now, I want to tell you, I have learned that starting from scratch all over and over again is not the way to go. That's what I used to do. And now if you've been reading my blogs or following me for a long time, you'll know my number one rule is to never start from scratch ever again. Nobody has time for that. We are moms. We are leaders. We are women. We are men. We are whoever you are. You've got stuff going on. You don't have time for that. My next rule is to keep everything as streamlined and simple as possible by using or developing a system. And then my third rule is to live with containers. Yes containers. These containers help to segment and organize your life. And I, they can be hypothetical or they can be literal. See through containers that are organized and well labeled. I have learned that that has helped me to prioritize which containers I put my A plus effort into and which containers I put my B plus effort into. 
so that we are never starting from scratch again. So I talk about this um, in my blog as well. So feel free to go there, www.evenifyoumiss.blog. And I talk super transparently about these three mistakes. So definitely check those out too. So we're gonna dive into them and with the intention of fixing them, not sitting and wallowing in them. Cause you know, I never approach a problem without an action or a system to fix it. So if you've been struggling to grow and engage your community and you're sitting in that funk, listen, we are not going to sit in that funk anymore. We are going to get traction. We're going to get a plan. We're going to get a system so that we consistently evolve. We're going to get you moving in the right direction to grow your lucrative community and your engagement and not to mention get your life back. So stick with me. These obstacles are going to be still obstacles, but you're going to know how to get around them a lot quicker. All right, so my first mistake, trying to make everyone happy in my life, in my business, in my mind, I miss the point of leadership completely. My whole goal was to be their friend. I got so concerned if someone wasn't happy. I spent all of my energy trying to make everyone like me, like me as their leader, like me as their friend, like me as a person, rather than trying to give them clear messaging on my expectations and clear support on how I would support them to do that. I gave them way too much wasted time and energy by trying to cater to everyone and get nothing done. I listened. I did. I did that but I didn't hear them. And then I actually invited everyone's problems into my office. I invited the problems here to give them all to me. I'll fix them all for you. And then I ran around like a chicken with my head cut off. And I actually may even have enabled my community into becoming problem seekers versus solution seekers because I was doing all the work because I was so busy trying to make everyone happy. I forgot about the community. And I actually only focused on individuals within that community which they only made things worse. So I took on their emotions and I took, I took on their reactions to problems. And I, I have, I hovered, I've won the hoverboard kick. I like hoarded them all and it took me down hard. You know, the ugly cry that was me a lot of the time because I didn't know what to do with them. I was so worried about them not liking me. I was worried about every little thing and every little story that I created in my head that wasn't even true, I manifested it. All right, you guys, you know that's not the right way to approach it. I know you know this. So after so many years I've doing this, I was sick of it. I wouldn't have lasted. So I came to the solution and an action. Now here's the action. What I needed to do was not make the individual happy or even worry about trying to make them happy. I needed to look for the patterns and trends in the conversations. And then I started taking notes. I started to find out where was the biggest pattern and gap and trend that my community needed, not what my individual needed. What was that massive community problem? Next, I found my 10% inch. So within that biggest priority or pattern in what the community needed, I looked for what I already knew about that priority and I wrote it all down. Next, I did the research that gave me that 10% edge. And then I actually had to try out what I found worked. So what I did was I went into classrooms and I team taught, or if you're in a business, you go in and you actually apply what you're learning and figure out what proof and evidence is showing what you did, how it's making some traction. I made sure I knew a lot about that one priority. And, uh, and then I, before that, I figured out those one to three very, very specific actions that I could teach my community to help them actually get success on this priority or, stru or structure. Notice I didn't say all of them. One priority with one to three actions. I gathered proof and evidence that it worked because of my actions and how it impacted the students or how it impacted my own learning. And that was everything. So can you see here how have, having a clear system can actually really help? You aren't trying to make everyone happy. Instead, you are spending your energy trying to find a solution to one problem through proof and evidence. So it's then that the community begins to see this and then they start to subscribe to your membership. They subscribe to your messaging. They subscribe over and over again because they know the clear expectations versus you having to run around trying to make everything happy and putting all of your energy into every one. Now you're putting your energy into every one priority that is a common priority among your community. So much so that you actually have time for yourself instead. 
So now you're focusing on less and you're getting a bigger impact. All right, number two. My second biggest mistake was I did it all. I don't mean I tried to make everyone happy. I did everything. I focused on all the things. I focused on all the people. I did all the tasks, all the emails, all the 99 problems, but you know what the rest is, and never accomplished anything. Sound familiar? I had no direction, getting nowhere fast. Nobody cared. I did it in my personal life and even in my business. So it just kept piling on more and more and more. And because people knew I would do it, they piled on too. I was my own worst enemy enemy, and I had no idea how I was going to do it all. I had no time for family, no idea where my days went and how I never seemed to get anything accomplished. Yeah, cluttered, messy, disorganized, affected my mood in the worst way. I was cranky, unhappy. I was unproductive. I lost my momentum. I lost my motivation because I had so much going on. I hated everything. I hated my job. I hated being, you know, a person at that point. I ran around trying to solve all the problems. And so I didn't even know what the problems were at some points. And guess what? Not one person appreciated it, of course. They, 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 were, they were doing their own lives and I was so concerned about being a part of everyone else's problems. Now, I'm sure you have felt this way at some point, and I was seriously sick and tired of the same mistake I was making over and over again, and it just made me not happy. So now for the system. Remember, I always come with the system. How did I get out of it? I took control of my calendar. It became my best friend. I talk about this all the time. I literally planned out my day using that one priority that I had already set, and that became what I did every day. I found out from my last mistake, my focus was on everything, right? So now I'm focusing on that one priority. Next, I chose three things to do every day to work towards that priority to get things done. And that's the only three things that I needed to get done that day. That's it. Those three actions to work towards that priority. Not 17 actions. Three. One to three, in fact. And once my day was over, the 4.30 bell rang in in my phone, like at a normal time. I went home. I was I went home and I was a mom. I shut it off. I went home and I didn't miss the hockey games anymore. And I actually had a life outside of school. I used the container system and I blocked out chunks of my day to focus on certain priorities. The containers of time that I blocked off were labeled. Literally, I labeled them in my calendar. They were labeled as family, personal, business, um, oh, priority, and miscellaneous. Miscellaneous was, oh, I've got a chunk of time where I can do whatever I want. Maybe I want to watch Home Edit or The Real Housewives. I set boundaries in my time and day through setting up containers. And when that timer went off or that container of focus, I made sure I stuck to my guns and I set another boundary. I put my A plus efforts. Now listen to this one. My A plus efforts only went into the priority containers. I'll say it one more time. My A plus effort only went into my priority containers. The B plus efforts, those went into all the other containers. Because if you're putting everything into everything all the time, you have nothing. So pick and choose your A plus efforts. The results that came from focusing on more, sorry, focusing more on less things, were that I received so much bigger of an impact. I had more time for family. I had less guilt. I gained more traction, actually, efficiency and productivity, and most of all, clarity. My community saw this too. They felt this too because I wasn't doing it all and I wasn't being so unfocused and super unclear. So of course, you know, because you're a leader that this system will take time and practice and time and commitment and dedication in order for you to find a system that works. However, it's going to change your life if you stick to it. I hope you can see how this powerful container system strategy is the key to clarity, which also will give your community a clear picture of your expectations. So it will help them engage more because they know what's in it for them. Now, who doesn't want a clear roadmap of where you're going, right? All right, let's get on to my third biggest mistake. Trying to engage my community with too many initiatives. It could have been my family too. Like, let's do this, 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 this. It backfired totally. This was a result of of my um, people-pleasing want and trying to answer everyone's questions. So I tried to answer everyone's questions by giving everybody all the answers. I tried all the new shiny things. I tried all the strategies to try to engage my community. However, 
It only made them throw their hands up in overwhelm. I filled the meetings. I did it all with housekeeping and clutter. And it totally backfired because I had no clear outcome. I had no clear outcome. And again, no clear expectations and a whole lot of me talking and no one listening. Kind of sounds like my kids actually. All right, now here's the action. Again, I use the priority that I had previously identified. Same priority for all three of these mistakes. And I focused only on that priority in a meeting or in a conversation. Meeting after meeting, I focused on the same priority, not many initiatives, one, until it wasn't a priority anymore. And I did not move on until that happened. So remember those three actions that I had been researching and trying in classrooms and trying in my own life? I modeled one of these actions at every meeting over and over again with proof and evidence every time. I gave them one thing they could take back to their classroom during each meeting through my own modeling and taking them through it as students so they could feel what it was like to be the learner and not just the teacher. I used that workshop approach that I talked so much about where I taught them a, a really small 10 to 15 minute mini lesson about that specific priority, modeling it throughout that mini lesson and engaging them in conversation throughout the mini lesson. But then I gave them time to practice this actual action within the meeting. That might've been where they're actually practicing it. They might be researching, they might be creating something, but they're doing the thinking and learning right in the meeting because they have lives too. They need to go home and be with their families. I don't need to be having them learn outside of the learning time. Their learning time is within those boundaries and then they go home just like me. Housekeeping, housekeeping became almost a swear word in our meetings because it was an effective use of our time. I sent them an email outside of the meeting and they could read it. And, and then I would set up an office time on Zoom and they could call me if they needed, had any questions about housekeeping. So if they knew what was happening, they didn't even, they just need to read the email. And if they didn't, that's okay, it happens. All right, we made it a priority to go deep with my time every time by focusing on less. It didn't take up a ton of planning time because I was focused on that one priority. And I already had my 10% edge. It wasn't a 10% edge for everything, one thing. And then I always gave the teachers time to practice that action in the meeting. And then I nudged and supported them throughout that meeting. And then I also had them make a decision before they left the meeting. What's one thing you're gonna try? It could be exactly what they tried in the meeting, or it could be a version of it um, that they could try in their classrooms. But they had to go and try it. They had to make a decision of an action they were gonna do. They did it for a month. They gathered proof and evidence and they came back to coach each other. So now you're building leaders too. Isn't it exciting to see how all these three mistakes all came together to be something huge because I honed in on my focus and my priority before and then I, I pulled the reins back on trying to do it all and I decided to be very intentional about one priority. So... I hope you're feeling a sense of relief knowing you don't have to stay stuck in, in as long as you have a system. So I hope that is, is kind of hitting home for you today. Can you imagine if you could do all these things and focus on so much less and engage your community and get your life back? So I'm going to go even deeper with these top three secrets. These are actually just the skittering, the, the surface, the hovering of of how you actually do this. I'm going to go into a free masterclass um, where I'm going to give you my top three secrets. And so this is kind of a hint of what's to come in the masterclass. The best part of attending this masterclass live is you will leave with a system. I will tell you exactly what to do to start to curate a plan that works for your community and your demographic. So do you see what an engaged, productive, efficient, action-taking community of teachers could do to your bottom line? Imagine what it would feel like if you no longer had to worry about engaging your community because they were motivated. They were subscribed to take action because of your clarity and your messaging, because they knew what to expect and had a clear roadmap that built trust. And instead, you could focus on things in your leadership that you have been dying to implement. So if you like this live, I've got more to share with you. Like I said, I have a free live masterclass coming up. I put the... Um, the link in the in the comments it's called three secrets to engaging your school community but i'm going to take 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 you sorry i'm going to take you on a journey um and show you what i've learned and then give you a system and you're going to dive even deeper into what i've just talked about and i'm going to give you even more information plus 
we're gonna even have some more opportunity for some real leadership bestie talk time. I'm gonna have a live Q&A session that's at the end to answer all of your questions. So I'm here for you. Head on over to jacelyn.com to see more information about it or you can click on the link I gave you. Now remember, I'm always here to support you. And no matter what you decide, whether you join me in the masterclass or not, I'm here for you. I wanna help us all to do the best work of our lives, to impact our adults and our students to be difference makers in our world. I would love to spend even more time to drill down your engagement questions with you and answer your questions live on my free masterclass. So just click on the link and I will see you inside. I hope you're feeling a sense of relief. I hope you're feeling a sense of relief knowing you don't have to stay stuck as long as you have a system in place. So if you are, get in the comments, you can tell me and think about future pace yourself a year from now if you start to implement this for a year and see where you're going and finally getting out of this this rut. So my goal is to have you out of these three mistakes as much as possible. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope um, you can imagine what it would feel like if you no longer had to worry about engaging your community because you're motivated to take action because you have clarity, you have clarity in your messaging, you have clarity in your expectations, you have your life back, you have your community trusting you, and now you can focus on things that you've been dying to implement. So if you like it, get get in the class. I, it's free. It's called Three Secrets to Engaging Your Community. I'm going to take what you've learned here. We're going to dive even deeper. We're going to have some Q&As. So head on over to this link and you can get registered right away. And guess what? It's live. So I'm here for you. You, I will, I will curate it to meet your needs. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you haven't already signed up, go to this link. I can't wait to see you there. Bye for now.